coming up thoughts today on the danger that still very much exists in motorsports let's go It's Thursday, January 12th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Let's get the important stuff done right off the top today. Ashton Torgerson was involved last night at the Chili Bowl in probably the scariest incident we've all ever seen. Afterwards, he was transported to a local hospital, but the Chili Bowl did report that he was, quote, alert and communicating with track officials. And then late last night, the Torgerson family sent out an update saying that Ashton was awake and alert at the hospital has feeling in his hands and feet, and had passed tests up to that point. They were going to continue with more tests and scans. That is all absolutely incredible news given the nature of the incident. It's a miracle that he's still alive, let alone passing tests at the hospital. That dude definitely had somebody watching over him last night. What happened on Wednesday night at the Chili Bowl, though, was a stark reminder about how absolutely insanely dangerous racing can still be. We love watching common people do uncommon things, but even with all of the advancements that have taken place with safety, the danger is still right there under the surface. It's honestly why a lot of us like racing. It's fast, it's dangerous, and at some base level, we are all still those same not-so-evolved beings that sat in the Coliseum and watched the gladiators fight. Sports like racing are obviously the modern-day version of that. Under most circumstances, drivers crash, they go for big flips, and somehow emerge from the car fine, if not a little pissed off, and we add them to the flip count. But the chance always exists for something terrible to happen, and luckily last night, the consequences were not worse. I'm not going to sit here and speculate about the cause, but I do know that Ashton's incident is a big gut check for every racer in that building, and hopefully racers all over. Be damn sure every time you climb into that seat that your safety gear is as right as you can make it. Double check everything. Have your crew double check everything. We like the idea of danger, but none of us actually want to see anyone hurt in any way. In my Twitter mentions this morning, someone brought up whether or not the race should have continued after the incident last night. And under the circumstances, I don't have a problem with the race going on. I know the drivers met with event officials, and I'm sure if the competitors would have had a serious problem with it, the night would have been stopped. And I highly doubt Matt Ward was in that meeting telling drivers they were required to continue on. Last night's field included some serious veteran guys. You talk about Rico, t Kevin Thomas Jr., RTJ, Cody Swanson, Ronnie Gardner. If those, uh, those guys were really against restarting the feature, I don't see them being quiet about it. Sporting events continuing after incidents like we saw last night need to be handled on a case-by-case basis, and what the competitors want to do is probably the most important thing. And this whole thing brings me back to what we talked about yesterday and what we've covered in the past when it comes to sketchy and dangerous moves out there. There were a handful of comments uh, on my show yesterday from people who didn't like what I said about Damian Gardner and what he did the night before. And you know what? That's fine. Don't watch. Unsubscribe to the channel. I've spent my whole life going to racetracks, working in motorsports, competing myself. I don't want to see crashes of any kind. I played on a softball team with Brian Clawson. I've interviewed Greg Hodnett. We had Bobby Johnson on Open Red right before Jason was killed. These are real people with friends and family, not nameless and faceless drivers with a helmet on just for our entertainment. The sport is clearly dangerous enough without people doing really dumb things to make it more so. So if calling out bad behavior on the racetracks makes me soft, then I guess I'm Charmin. So be it. We want close racing. The aggression is entertaining as hell. And the racers know what they are signing up for. But there is a line. And when that line is crossed, the consequences are real. Once the feature got rolling again last night, we were treated to another good show. Mitchell Moles was in control for a lot of that race. But after falling back a bit after the restart, Rico Abreu was able to get the top rolling and move forward. He snuck by Moles on the white flag lap to steal the victory. Moles ended up second with Brent Cruz in third. So Rico and Moles are now locked into Saturday, joining Cannon McIntosh, Shane Golubic, Hank Davis, and Spencer Baston. Brent Cruz uh, also on the podium. He'll head to a Saturday B main with Blake Hahn, KTJ, RTJ, Taylor Reimer, and Timez. And kudos to Rico for his Victory Lane interview. If you haven't watched it, go find it on Flow Racing today. Uh, At the Chili Bowl today, the racing continues inside the Expo with the fourth of five prelim nights. Same deal today, Hall Laps at 4 Central with racing at 5. We should be again into the 70s for car count. 
And the names to keep an eye on today include Jacob Allen in his first Chili Bowl, Emerson Axum, Brady Bacon, Casey Schumann, CJ Leary, Ryan Bernal, and defending champ Tanner Thorson. Tanner Carica also in the field tonight. He won a prelim night last year. Probably have Thorson and Axum near the top of win picks, but it should, again, be a tough battle for those lock-in spots. Down at Auto Speedway Park in New Mexico last night, we got the third of six nights for the Wild West shootout. The event was quiet Monday and Tuesday, and it goes quiet again tonight before restarting on Friday. So no Wild West shootout tonight. We'll be back racing again on Friday. Unfortunately for the field, Jonathan Davenport didn't forget how to win during those days off, and his guys didn't forget how to set up that 49 machine. JD started on the pole and went the distance to make it three wins in three nights. Bobby Pierce tried to track him down late in lap traffic, getting close a few times, but Superman was just too strong. Uh, he did have to make some pretty big moves to get by lappers down the stretch, uh, so uh, he definitely had a lot of work to do, but you can't win all six if you don't win the first three. Pierce settled for second with Brandon Shepard third. Kyle Larson wasn't really a factor for the win, ending up uh, on, uh, in sixth on the night. I still think that Shepard or Pierce break through for one of these before the week is out. They've been just too good up to this point. But Davenport might prove me wrong about the week-long sweep and that $300 bonus money. Derek Ramirez won again in the modified while Lucas Rodin took down the X-Mod uh, win. Like I said, the Wild West shootout will continue on Friday. Streaming schedule has four more shows on it for today. Flow Racing has night four from the Chili Bowl and Flow 24-7. The Winter Nationals from Cocopa continue on Speed Sport, and there is Dirt Vision now. If you want to see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's a great place to just check out every single day uh, for whatever is happening on the streaming services. If you're new around here, definitely a good place to check out. And dirttracker.com as a whole is a great place to go check out whatever you need. Uh, news, new podcast episodes, the streaming schedule, the end analytics section, all kinds of great content over there at dirttracker.com. All right, that's it for the show today. Have a good Thursday out there. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll be right back here tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.